Normally before I buy any kind of plant or animal, I spend days researching it to make sure it's going to be perfect for my setup. However, this camel shrimp was a spur of the moment purchase based on some bad sales advice. It's supposed to be reef safe, but after about three minutes in my tank, that turned out to be a lie. So I quickly whacked together this little tank, packed it full of macro algae, and gave it a new little isolation tank. Now this isn't ideal as you can see, so it's time to own up to my mistake and build this little camel shrimp a proper home. So in this video, I'm gonna be setting up a 45 liter saltwater macro algae tank. So first you'll need an aquarium, any will do. You'll also need a filter or a wave maker. A filter is probably better, just to hang on back is fine. You'll also need a light, not a reef light. Any old aquarium light will do. It grows better under these lights. You'll also need a heater, some salt to make salt water, aragonite sand or something similar, some kind of a reef sand, reef rock, again, any kind will do, and obviously some macro algae. Once you've got your equipment and your materials ready, you're good to go. This tank that I'm gonna be using is a super shallow 60 by 30 by 20 centimeter or 23 by 6.2 by 11.81 by 7.87 inches. Ignore the light that I'm using for now. I have a far better one I'm gonna be adding once I've moved it into position. For the substrate in this, I'm piling in a fair bit of aragonite sand here. This stuff is a mix of about three different sizes. So some small, medium and large stuff. You can use whatever you like. This is just what I had lying around. As macro algae likes to root into the sand, most species anyway, I'm going to be making quite a deep sand bed for this. And I'm also gonna be adding some fish and inverts that like to dig as well. So this is gonna be important. The hardscape is a mix of Arca reef rocks. It's just some leftovers I had when I set up my super shallow reef tank earlier in the year. The hardscape isn't gonna have too much planning done this time around. I'm just piling it in rather randomly whilst trying to make some little caves and hides. I'm also pushing it into the sand bed quite a lot, pretty much so it touches the bottom, just so it doesn't collapse if anything decides to dig underneath it. This is quite common for a lot of reef species. This is something that a lot of the species I'm going to be getting will eventually be doing. It doesn't look like much, but so far this works out to be roughly 10 kilos of stone. Now, just to finalize things, I'm gonna add another big heap of sand. Again, it's just a mix of all different random sizes. And to be honest, the entire process only took me about 20 minutes to set up. Oh, and I also forgot to mention, if you are using this kind of sand, make sure you rinse it really well because it's always super dusty. Now I'm just gonna move it into position on my stand and fill it with water. Rather than make an entire new batch of salt water, I'm just gonna be draining in water from my reef tank, which is above this one. That'll allow me to put some cycled water in and then top up my reef tank with clean water. This doesn't technically cycle a tank, but it's just a little boost anyway. The next day I broke down the temporary tank, which I had running for about a month and then added a lot of the rocks and sand from that tank straight into this new tank which will help it cycle a lot quicker. This should give it a really good boost. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of sea chem stability and some micro back to seven as well, just to make sure things are perfect because I am gonna be adding my little camel shrimp on day one. So the only actual tech in this tank at the moment is a little Hyga wave maker and a heater. Though because it's super hot here at the moment, I'm gonna be adding the heater at a later date. So don't be too surprised if you don't see it here yet. At this stage, I've only got three types of macro algae. Botrycladia red grape, I think I pronounced that all right. Halimenia sp, dragon's tongue, and Calerpa prolifera. So the green one is the Calerpa and it grows like crazy. I'm gonna fill the entire back wall with this stuff. It grows so fast, it almost looks like you can watch it grow in real time. For whatever reason though, macro algae is kind of hard to come by here in Europe. So if you do have a ton of excess stuff, just let me know because I'd love to buy some of you. So just drop a comment below and we can organize something. So this is how the tank looks straight after the planting. So far, so good. Now I just need to get a few more species. And I've also dropped in my little camel shrimp here. I just waited about six hours or so, then dropped in straight in. So if you are setting up a new tank though, just make sure you're gonna be waiting for the cycle to complete. You need to wait about a month usually and go through the standard cycling process. You'll also notice the light that I'm using. This is the new Skylight Entrick FL60. 
it's a really good light for this. It has a ton of options and I'm just using it on the trophy option, which is like the perfect balance for growing macro algae. It's not specifically designed for macro algae, but it does a really good job growing plants and it works really well for macro algae. I've got one more piece of equipment in this tank, which isn't required, but it's quite handy if you're into keeping a really close watch on your parameters. I recently used it in my previous aquascaping video and it's the Cactoily 7-in-1 water monitor. It works in fresh water and salt water, so I'm going to give it a whirl on this tank as well just to see how well it performs. And so far, so good. While it tracks seven different things, the three most important ones in a salt water tank are pH, salinity and temperature. As with all things in aquariums, stability is key, so keeping your levels as stable as possible is super important. That said, macroalgae is quite a lot more forgiving than corals, so this is the perfect middle ground between fresh and salt water. It's basically a planted saltwater aquarium. There's one more important thing when setting up a saltwater aquarium, and that's keeping your salinity levels stable. When water evaporates from the tank, the salinity level will increase, so you need to make sure that you only top up the missing water with fresh water. The easiest way to do this is to fill your tank then mark the high water line and any water that evaporates you can just replace with fresh water. While this system works pretty well you still want to check your levels at least once a week just to make sure things haven't fluctuated too much. So I just checked this using my refractometer and my Cactoily app. If there's any major differences it's time to investigate and see if something needs calibrating. Moving on to the most interesting part of this entire video is the inhabitants most of which are hitchhikers that arrive without any planning. This is super common in saltwater aquariums and depending on your tank is either super interesting or a future nightmare. In this tank though, I don't really mind how it unfolds, so whatever ends up here, that's fine. On day one, I added my camel shrimp, then four weeks later, I added a little yellow clown goby called Servo. He got this name because he spent the first two days up in the top left corner of the tank, perched like a little surveillance camera. He's settled in well now and spends most of his time in the red grape macroalgae, though he does roam around the entire tank from time to time. There's also a ton of random things in here as well. There's some tiny feather duster worms which cling to the rocks. These are harmless little filter feeders which are great to have in any tank. There's also an Asterina starfish in here. There's one that I know of but there's probably more. These are quite a common pest in the hobby that do cause issues with coral. I also just recently found this really interesting jellyfish clinging to the glass. It's some type of micro jellyfish and it's insanely tiny. Though I did manage to get some good footage of it with my 2 times macro lens. Here it is compared to the end of my fingertip. I don't know much about it, but everything I did see online suggested that it's harmless and the tank's probably loaded with them, but I've only seen about six so far on the glass. There are also two brittle star in here, though I don't see them very often, as well as an assortment of random snails. And I've also swapped out the Hiker Wave Maker here for a cheap Sun Sun hang on back filter. I had some issues with the Wave Maker pulling in the Calerpa. Basically, it was just pulling it in and the blades were shredding it, so I needed to find something that didn't have as much suction, and this seemed to solve the problem perfectly. It's just an empty filter, I don't have any media in it, it's just there to provide the flow. Anyway, that wraps up this video. If you haven't already checked out my Reef Tank series, you can check it out right here, and don't forget to check out my new website. Cheers everyone, see you in the next video.